What is your full name? William Clell Hartley. And your birthday? 91026. Where were you born? Caldwell County. How long have you lived in Caldwell County? All of my life, 86 years. Um, how many siblings do you have? Three. Do you have any memories with them you want to share with us? Any memories? How far back do you want to go? As far as you can <laughs> think of. <clears throat> As far back as I can remember, <clears throat> it was uh, my granddad, uh, Lynn Hartley. He had a little patch of uh, clover on the side of a hill over here, real steep. And he wanted the clover to do real well. And he was going to take mule manure and put on the side of this hill over there for his clover to, to grow real well. So he didn't hook the mule to his sled and put the manure on the sled and take it over there and carry it up the hill. He had two big baskets. They called them fanny, fanny, fanny baskets. Anyway, they made it made like a person's behind, you know. Yeah, size. yeah. I'm I'm, I'm fanny baskets. And uh, he put this dried mule manure in these baskets and he carried one on each arm and went over there and climbed up beside that hill and he spread that manure. manure. I little, that's the only thing I can remember the far back, probably five years old. He would he would be coming back by the time I got over, walked over there behind him, you know, he walked real fast, you know. He'd be coming back already and we got, he'd go back and get another load of mule manure to put on the side of the hill. That's as far back as I can remember. <laughs> That's probably about 19 and uh, 30, 31 or 2 or somewhere around there. <laughs> do you remember any, do you have any fond memories of you and your brothers and sisters? Yeah, we did all kinds of things back in them days. We had, we had animals to work, you know. Goats and calves, and finally you had a pretty good sized uh, uh, bull, you know. And uh, he broke him to work, you know, to our wagons. And uh, Boone Estes made a, my daddy had to <coughs> make a wagon just like a horse drawn wagon, only miniature, you know. A hard job to make that thing. Very few people could have made it, you know. Just like a animal grown wagon, you know, commercial wagon. And my daddy fixed some shaves in it. Shaves was fits on each side of the bull, you know, to pull the pull the wagon. And we would haul leaves we had the we bedded the cow stables with leaves, you know. Put the cows had about anywhere from four to six cows to milk every they were not close. We didn't milk them till they got old, you know. And it put these leaves in the cow stables for bedding, you know, so so she keep herself sort of clean, you know. And we we did that. And we you know, uh, worked. We worked all the time. After we got uh, your size, we did. Farm work just along with the with the adults, you know, hold corn and, and did all kind of pick beans and and, and dug rice potatoes, uh, all kinds of things. And back then there wasn't many bugs. We'd have a little tin can with a little kerosene in it, and we go with and with in it rice potato plants, and we'd shake those bugs off in them can, you know, they'd, they'd kill him. And on the beans the same way. They didn't have anything to spray them with, you know, back mm -hmm. then. They didn't have that many bugs. And, uh, and you go through the, go through the, between the rows of the beans and, and shake them into their little can, you know. And uh, we did all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. I wrote my memoirs, you should have got a hold of that, read that. <laughs> 
So, but what's the next thing? Who would you say you were closest to out of your siblings? It's a family basket. Who would you say that you're closest to out of your siblings? My brother Johnny. He and I did most things together. Brother Joe was uh, four years older than I. Like four years younger than I. Mm -hmm. Mama had him up and doing a lot of the housework, you know. And she liked to work outside too, you know. And, and he and I did a lot of things that Brother Joe didn't get to do, you know, uh, in those days. <clears throat> And we we made uh, wagons out of wood, wooden wheel wagons. We cut a piece of a end of a log off, you know, and about two inches thick, you know, bored a hole in it and put it on axle. Made wagons and uh, to ride, pull it up way up steep hills over here, ride down the down the hills, you know. <clears throat> One time, <clears throat> someone told us to to get a piece of a uh, piece of a, the skin off of a ham <coughs> and just take the, the, the piece of ham and put it around your axle and tack it on top, you know, and leave the greasy side on the outside, you know, and the other, the, other, the face side on, on the axle, you know, but the greasy side and then put your wheel on the, on the, over the piece of a, uh, Hog skin, you know, and we thought that was just like um, having a fast car, you know. Back in them days, you didn't have douches and all that stuff. But we, it would go faster with that greasy piece of meat tacked on that axle, you know, <laughs> down the hill, you know. We, you know, we didn't have them. My daddy didn't let us have uh, the grease that he put on his axle wagon, wagon axles, you know. He kept that to himself. Mm. What was it like as a teenager growing up? Well, back in those days, uh, teenagers had most every teenager had to work. You know, they they played outside. They didn't watch TV all day. We didn't we didn't we didn't have a radio till I was probably fourteen years old. And no telephone, no nothing. And, no electricity. Had a, no electricity. And had a kerosene lamp like that was sitting up top of the refrigerator right there for light. <coughs> That's all you had. Uh, we got electricity. Had a wood, had wood stove and had a, had a fireplace and it was always cold because all the heat went up the chimney, you know. And the houses was, had, uh, Wood shingles on top of the house, and sometimes you could see a crack through 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 the ceiling, and you could see all the way through the crack in the top of the house. You know, somehow it didn't seem to leak. You know, yeah. <clears throat> what was your first job? First job. Mm -hmm. First public job. First pur public job I uh, had was. Um, when I was 16 years old, uh, in August, uh, when things, we didn't have to work so much, they let me <clears throat> go, up, go over there to the Ford place in Lenore and see if I could get a job working on 80 model cars, you know. So I went over there <clears throat> and uh, got a job working on 80 model cars. I would reline the brakes, you know. I, I could do stuff like that, reline the brakes, and then I'd uh, I'd sand them down, you know, uh, get them ready to paint and all that stuff, you know. And I worked a while at that for three dollars a day for ten hours, and uh, <clears throat> but I worked a good good little while. But they put me outside in the hot sunshine to sand this model. A car down, you know, and this is just too hot out there, you know. I have to sand that hot vehicle, you know, and that was the last day I worked. <coughs> I didn't go back. <laughs> <laughs> Would you call driving? Oh, yeah. 
I drove the school bus um, after I got 16 years old, you know, or two years, and and uh, you didn't have a telephone or anything, or radio or anything. You went, you drove the thing to school, no matter if it, how much snow or ice there was, you put chains on the bus. The driver put the chains on. And sometimes the road would be so bad in some places I'd have to put chains on anyway. Even if it didn't snow or to even get through, you know. There wouldn't be gravel or anything on it. <clears throat> and I drove school bus for, for two years there. <clears throat> and you got eleven dollars a half a month. Uh, driving school bus. <clears throat> and uh, Did you ever serve in the military or any active duty in war? Spent uh, nearly two years in in the army. I took basic training in uh, Camp Croft, uh, South Carolina, and uh, <clears throat> and I went from there down to uh, down to Alabama. I forgot the name of that camp down there for jungle warfare. But the but the war was about to end then, you know, and they they called us out. To, uh, you meant you ought to be in the invasion of Japan. So they put us on a troop train, and uh, we got to California. And the Harry Truman had let them drop the atomic bomb. That saved my neck, you know. So we were, we were going for the invasion of Japan, and those Japanese would have fought to the last person, you know. And and so, uh, but we went on and on over there to the Philippines, stayed in the Philippines for a while, you know. And uh, and those boys there, they'd already been in the military for four or five years, you know, and they wasn't getting to come home like they should have. Uh, yet, yet got to come home like the people in the European theater. They were getting to come home on the Queen Mary fancy ship, you know, and all that stuff. And they actually had a military ride in uh, Manila. And a, a bunch of boys got it in the... Uh, Went downtown in Manila there and just raised cane, you know. They wasn't getting to come home, you know, like the rest of people was. They'd been uh, been in the South Pacific for up to five years, you know, and fighting, and, and they wanted to get home. So we unloaded all those ships there, and all kinds of munitions of all kinds <laughs> of trucks and, and crates and everything, you know. And they built, uh, they built, uh, Bunks out of lumber for these uh, commercial ships, you know. To some of them to come back home, and you get down the hole, and there's just a just a hole, you know, in that ship, you know, the commercial ship. And they put bunks down in there. <laughs> they didn't have a a lot of people to go in there, but they did get to come home on a little ahead of what they would have had to come home on, you know. And it went to, from there up to Korea. The Japs were, they just had got rid of most of them. There's still a few there. Uh, but those people were starved to death. You never saw a fat person in any of those countries over there. Not one. Not one, well, not a fat person. It's all shit, you know. Do you have any memories of the war? Anything that sticks out to you or you remember really good? Uh, just thankful I uh, wasn't in any, any combat whatsoever. We, were, we got there. We got to California and the war had ended, you know. Mm -hmm. And celebrated, oh man, they just mm -hmm. tickled their death and mm -hmm. had that war over, you know. What was it like being in California whenever the war ended? Well, they, there's a few boys that got, got a little pass going up, up town, you know. This is, it's, it's in Fort Ord, California. They had a little pass to go up town. They were, all, they was already there when the old war ended, you know. They had a little pass to go up town. And they sent, uh, the, they sent the, the military boys, MPs, into town to get them all back in, back in the camp. They were afraid they'd have a ride of some kind, you know, cut up too much, you know. Had them all come back in the, in the camp. They all left them alone to, to let them play around in the town. <laughs> and they had, had a garbage cans. Uh, to dump uh, excess food is what it is. Haul it out to dump it on the ground out way up from camp, you know. 
and you'd have to fight the people off the truck so you could dump the stuff. They starve to death. They get in there, the hands and feet, and it, eating mm -hmm. whatever they could find. Starve to death, people were, you know. Where was that at? Korea. Korea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <coughs> What's your full name? <laughs> Margaret Elizabeth Hartley. And your birthday? 6527. Do you remember anything about your childhood, especially? Oh, yes. Quite a bit. As far back as I can remember, <clears throat> it was in the second grade. I can remember going to school in the second grade. And the teacher's name was Elizabeth Hartman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I can remember being in her class in school. That's as far back as I can remember. I don't really remember anything that went on at home. Mm -hmm. Do you, What grade of school did you go until? Did I go into? What grade did you go up to? Oh, not. Yeah. How did you and Clell meet? Oh, uh, uh, we grew up next door to each other. We'd known each other all of our lives, even as children. Mm -hmm. <laughs> On Sunday mornings, we always walked to church, and we walked. <clears throat> we lived up there, behind that wooded area back there, and we'd walk down here and go through here by his house every Sunday morning on our way to church. <laughs> so it's just a, like a family, always. <laughs> How old were you when you got together? Well, I don't remember. We were about 20 years old, I guess, when you come back from service. We were about 21. How long have you, um, you been married? We've been married 61 years. It'll be 62 in April. Do you have any memories of whenever you and him were younger, whenever you got married? When we all kinds of places, went to movies, and, uh, went up in the mountains, and go to church. And did you go on a honeymoon? Oh, we did to Pigeon Forge. Mm -hmm. Do either of you wish you had done anything differently in your lives, as far as jobs or anything? Well, uh, I have thought that I, I kind of had the chance to have good jobs if I had finished school. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you wish you would have gone through more school to get a job? Well, I guess I do. I never thought about it that much because there was actually not a lot of jobs to, to get. <laughs> do you have any regrets? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Oh, bless her. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, I wish I'd have done, done something a little different to have um, made a little more money than what I did, you know. Mm -hmm. You didn't get to go to college like the others did you because you had to work on the farm. What was that like working on a farm? That was uh, drudgery. Everything had to be done by hand. You mm -hmm. didn't have any... Any equipment, you know, of any kind. Back in them days, everything was done by hand. Had to carry the feed, the feed the hogs, you know, and they had to. Uh, we had to carry the hay. Had to bring the hay in to feed the cows and all that stuff, and you know, and all, mules and everything. You had to feed them. You had to feed the chickens by hand, you know, and carry water and carry water to the hogs and. And water the hogs and, and just something to do all the time. Mm -hmm. And my daddy worked, in, he had, being on the farm, he had to work about seven days a week, you know, having the animals to take care of and milk cows and all that stuff, you know. And it took you so long to do the chores by hand. You can do these things quick now. Mm -hmm. I guess that's the reason you had to work so such long hours because of the way you had to do it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Whenever you had kids and any funny things that they did or anything? Well, I'd have to think about it a while. Emily and Brent were born so close together as stayed so busy trying to take care of them. They were like twins. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I don't really remember. Do you, Clay? I mean... <laughs> no, well, they were real good Good children, that's for sure. 
I'm glad, I, was a tomboy. I'm glad I got them raised uh, when gasoline was 26 to 29 cents a gallon. <laughs> because I had a pump out here in the yard and they could drive up to the pump and fill up their vehicle and take off. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Emily was a tomboy. They, they had a good life. They, they played outside, you know, and just done all kinds of things. And they got to drive the tractors. And How many kids do you have? Three. Three. Emily and Brent really had a better time than Emily because there's a lot of years between Emily and Sarah. Mm-hmm. And Sarah was kind of by herself here, you see. Emily was out and gone and running up and down the roads <laughs> having a good time. They had a really good time, Brittany and Emily did as children. What stuff did they do? Oh, they just they went swimming a lot. And uh, they'd skate, go uh, sledding when it was uh, when it snow. And you made them a go-kart one time and they they just did all kinds of mm-hmm. things. Yeah, they like sleds and snows on this hill over here. They, it'd be icy on top, you know, and you'd have to roll off the way before you got down to the, to the stream, you know, <laughs> to keep them all going into the stream. They had a great time. Oh, they had yeah. a good time. I had a teacher I didn't like in the seventh grade. She had all the boys to make a, a, a covered wagon like the old timers did in George West. So I made a wagon that looked like a wagon. These boys took them, took a cigar box and pasted four wheels on the thing, you know, and put a little piece of uh, paper, a pasteboard out the front for a tongue in the thing. I made a wagon out of spools Cut the ends off with two spools, made the little wheels, put it on an axle, and uh, made a bed for the wagon, you know, out of a, out of a cheese box. You had to cut the top of the cheese box off, I think it was about this wide, and uh, almost a foot long, you know. And I nailed the axles onto the bottom of that cheese box, and put a tongue in there, and put a double tree for the Horses to pull, and a single tree, <coughs> and a tongue, and a breast yoke, and I took a red hot nail and and punched little holes in the sideboards of the wagon. You burnt the red hot nail, burnt a little hole down in there. So you put a piece of wire across over on the other side, burn holes on the side, other side, and I put four four strands of four pieces of wire across the top to make a little make bows, you know. And I pasted a piece of rag for a cover down on each side, and made that paste was made out of flour and water, <clears throat> and uh, and it looked like a real wagon, you know. And I took it to school, and the teacher said, "You didn't make that thing." And she took it. I don't know what she did, but she wouldn't let me have it back. And I was afraid to tell my parents because they'd have went up there and got on to her. And I was afraid to ask her if I could have it back, you know. It would work. The wheels would roll, you know. It's, it's a real, real covered little wagon. And I still despise that teacher. In the, in the first grade, we were having a May Day celebration. We was always out of school in, in April, but we were having a May Day celebration anyway. And George Chambers and I was supposed to be elves. <laughs> you know, elves and at a camp on a great long tunnel like thing and stick out back behind like this and uh, the two feet were the same way stick way out here way mm-hmm. out to the point like this and someone had made those two suits for us you know he and I but we couldn't get them on over our overalls and shirts you know we just tried and we tried to get those things on over the shirt, 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 over our clothes you know and Miss Chester says, little boys, you're just going to have to take your clothes off. <laughs> and George and I said, Lord, mercy, we don't want to take our clothes off. <laughs> because in them days, a kid in in the first grade, all they had on was a shirt and a pair of overalls. <laughs> and didn't even have on shoes, you know, didn't they wear shoes to school after it got warm enough to have 
So we decided, well, we, and Miss Chester said, oh, Mr. Chester, Miss Chester don't mind to see little boys. <laughs> and George and I said, well, <laughs> we took our clothes off. <laughs> and we barely could get the suits on, you know, without, without, without any clothes on. Can you imagine kids doing that this day and time? <laughs> <laughs> I can think of a whole bunch of stuff I had time yeah. I can actually be in it. I remember being in the room in her room she taught first grade but I can remember learning to count when she had a little frame that had a little wire stretched across it and had little buttons on it mm -hmm. and learned to count them the little buttons mm -hmm. and she had birch the sticks that she cut you know about that long, I guess. We learned to uh, count them too. She gave us a little handful of sticks to <laughs> learn to count. Where did you go to school? Collinsville, same place. Okay. What grade did it go up to? Eleven. Did y'all both go to ninth grade? Almost. What did you do after you got out of school? I went to work in a cotton mill in Hudson. My brother and his wife lived down there, and I lived with them about a year. Then I got a job at the Bluebell, and I worked there for, hmm, I forgot how many years I worked there. What was the Bluebell? Oh, uh, they made uh, blue jeans for the Navy. I liked to do that, but uh, then when Britain M was born, I didn't go back to work till, uh, Oh, well, they were about 10, 11 years old. I went back to the Bluebell and worked a while, but not very long. And I got a job at uh, Brawl Hills in the sewing room. I loved that. It was clean. <laughs> it was a nice place. <laughs> I had lots of friends. It's then I run a machine that made buttonholes. And I have lots of friends there. But the, the sewing room at Broad Hills was was a nicer place. I mean, it was cleaner and, and all of them did well. What was it like for you being a teenager growing up? Well, that was about it, working and, <laughs> and working in the fields at home. And, uh, and I got the job at the cotton mill. I was barely 16. Really. How do you see your future with Clell and <laughs> how do you see your future in general turning out? How's it turning out or how did it turn out? How did it turn out? I was just fine. Uh, yeah, we, we got along good. Uh, we've been good to each other. You know, a little bit to each other. Hey, Keely girl. Hey. It's been happy for me. <laughs> How about you? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> it, it's all gone.